You're my buddy, you're my friend. You're my buddy till the end. Give it a rest, you're not getting any of my beignets. Hey everyone and welcome to The Sandbox. Another season of Barry has come and gone, which means it's time to rank every episode from the worst to the best. And that is no easy task as this is one of the best made shows of all time. I actually put out a video essay almost two years ago after watching the first two seasons, which you can check out by clicking this link right up there. I was blown away by the show and I continue to be with season three. But before I share my list, don't forget to share yours down in the comments below and let me know what other shows you'd like to see me do episode rankings of. We got a lot of content coming out right now with The Boys Season 3, Obi-Wan, Miss Marvel, Lightyear, Jurassic World, and so much more that I can't even keep up with it all. So please let me know what you guys would want to see me cover. That said, I do have a Gravity Falls episode ranking in the works as well as round two for Disney versus Pixar. So be on the lookout for those in the coming weeks. Starting at the bottom with number eight, I have episode three, Ben Mendelsohn. Ranking Barry episodes is really tough as every episode is trying to do something different, whether that be moving along the story, setting up or paying off a specific character arc, or just trying to deliver solid humor or a crazy action sequence. Episode 3 in particular focuses on moving the story along and setting up Fuchs' return to LA. There are some great scenes here such as the opening scene with Gene and the producers, Sally's press junket with different interviewers, and Gene telling off Barry while shooting their scene before storming off. It's an enjoyable episode and it moves along the story well enough while setting up bigger things for Gene as well as Cristobal's and Hank's issue with Fernando, but it doesn't have anything that's really drawing me back for rewatch. Moving on to number 7 is episode 5, Crazy Time Shit Show. For me, this is one of the funnier episodes from this season, and while its plot is in the middle of a bunch of different storylines, the character arcs are really up front and center here. Sally's descent after her big high begins with her show being cancelled by an algorithm, and Gene's uphill climb lifts off with him attending a dinner party and beginning to right the wrongs from his previous career. Meanwhile, Barry talks to Hank about him blowing up on Sally and her leaving him, and Hank tells Barry the truth in that he is a very rageful human being. You know, like, I, I basically, I, I went like this, I was like, Sally, you gotta help my friend. Like, I said it that loud. Sure. Barry, you have massive, massive rage issues. And so Barry goes to Sally's to drop off his keys and then tries to console her when he hears about her show being canceled in the best way he knows how. Do you know where she lives? I don't know. What, were you gonna, like, send her an angry letter or something? No, no nothing like that. I'm just gonna freak her out a little bit. We also get to see Fuchs's supposed tiger army attempt their first hit on Barry, which ends with Julie shooting her son Kyle. And lastly, Hank's operations are taken out, his house is raided, and Cristobal's wife shows up to kidnap him, setting up the final three episodes for that arc spectacularly. But coming in at number six is episode two, Limonada. After a fantastic season premiere, episode 2 picks up with Barry trying to help Gene and get him a part to help revitalize his career. There are some funny bits here with Barry keeping Gene in the trunk of his car, Hank getting his crew out before Fernando's raid, and how roles just seem to fall right into Barry's lap. But of course, the big moments from this episode revolve around Sally's growth as a creative, trying to keep up with the industry as she finalizes her show, and Barry's big blow up on her that cements a few themes for the season. Number one, that Sally is still in an abusive relationship which further drives her insecurities and her persuadability. Number two, it begins Sally's arc of becoming corrupted by Barry's influence. And number three, it showcases just how off the rails Barry has become, especially how dismissive he is of his behavior when they talk over the phone. Barry doesn't even realize how psychotic he's become. It's one of the most powerful and scary scenes that the show has to offer, but that alone isn't enough to compete with the other episodes on this list. And so, taking the number five spot, it is episode one, Forgiving Jeff. 
The season premiere was a fantastic kickoff to the season, giving us hints of how metaphorical the show might be at times, and perfectly displaying where all our characters stand. Barry is depressed, he's given up on himself and given in to the Hitman game. He's really let himself go and doesn't think that he can be forgiven for any of it. That is, of course, until the very end where he has an epiphany in that he can save himself by first saving Gene's career and their relationship. Meanwhile, Gene mirrors Barry's emotional state, but he's on the opposite end of it, the receiving end of Barry's heinous acts. He is still reeling from Moss's death, and he sets out to take out Barry himself, that is, until he screws it up entirely. Meanwhile, Sally has her own show and is kicking butt in the entertainment industry, still as self-entitled and arrogant as ever. And Noho Hank has started heroin operations with the Chechens, while the cops continue to hunt for Fuchs, who Hank has dubbed the Raven. All in all, it's a great season premiere that sets up the board perfectly while still allowing the show's humor to shine as well. Right, Hank, I'm fed up with the mind games. Right, my patience was here. Now, it's here. We both had bodies killed. You have some bodies. I have no bodies. But coming in at number four is episode four, All the Sauces. Serving as the mid-season finale of sorts, episode four does a great job with character growth, bringing some arcs to a close while beginning new ones. And it's probably one of the more comedic episodes, albeit more subtle comedy. How can I help you today? Uh, yeah, my app isn't uh, syncing with the Bluetooth on the device I'm trying to detonate. Sure, okay, I can help you with that. Hank enlists Barry's help to save Cristobal from Fernando, which helps to patch up Hank's and Barry's relationship a bit. Fuchs returns to LA and starts gathering his tiger army, seeking out the families of people that Barry has killed to give them their revenge. Gene's growth for the season really starts here as well as people start to hear his story about Barry and Barry decides to let go of Gene and give him money to help him and his family. But Sally's scenes in this episode were the true icing on the cake. She attends the premiere of her show Joplin and Sarah's acting here is phenomenal, portraying that cringy, narcissistic actor perfectly. And I can only hope that she really is acting here. In the end, Katie finally comes clean to Sally about her true feelings for Barry, and Sally, being easily persuaded, decides to end their relationship. Episode 4 does a fantastic job with endings and beginnings, leaving us fans guessing where the show could go, yet simultaneously setting up the latter half of the season extremely well. But kicking off my top 3 is Episode 6, 710 North. What a fantastic episode. This is where the big consequences really begin and characters are forced to make their realizations and either come out better because of it or worse for it. Fuchs is shot by a biker gang led by Tyler's sister, only to be saved by a stranger and cared for by him and his family, which includes yet another attractive girl who's interested in Fuchs for God knows what reason. However, in the end, he sets out to take down Barry, offering to help Jim Moss find his daughter's killer. Meanwhile, Albert doesn't think Fuchs is either the Raven or the one who killed Janet, and he gets closer to Barry's trail. He gets together with Chris's wife, and they agree to arrange a get-together with all the vets, which perfectly sets up this episode's finale. But before we talk about that, I gotta address Sally's and Jean's growth here, with Sally accepting a belittling job as a writer on an awful show to keep face and relations with Banshee. Meanwhile, Jean is offered his own masterclass show, and he uses the opportunity to help Annie, whose career he single-handedly destroyed in the past. This episode continues these arcs and sets up the ending for them very well. Now, as for Barry, this episode was bananas, from him talk texting to Sally while he's shopping, yelling at you at work, comma, offering to break into your boss's house, comma, to his insane motorbike chase. and to his inevitable downfall with Chris's wife, who used the get-together as a ruse for not only Barry, but for us as the audience. This really was peak storytelling infused with awesome action and hilarity at every turn. And who can forget beignets by Mitch? 
Those are massive red flags, bro. So I go down to Bolivia and say like, you know, like no more red flags, right? But taking my runner up spot is none other than the finale episode eight starting now. Continuing the momentum from episode six and seven, episode eight brings everything to an amazing conclusion with Albert confronting Barry, Hank saving Cristobal, Jean continuing on to new projects and Sally going off the deep end. All these arcs come together so fantastically and so horribly. Barry finally does some good, some real good, saving Sally from her own down spiraling psyche and then he tries to save Jean from everything bad that he caused as well, only to have it all blow up in his face and be put away from a sting operation masterminded by none other than Jim Moss and Jean Kusina. Truly, by the end of this episode, my jaw was on the floor. I was shocked and riddled with disbelief. This was such an amazing way to close out a season, and if things really are just starting now, I can't wait to see how they end it all with season four. But coming in at number one is episode seven, Candy Asses. Serving as the perfect bridge between episode six and eight, this episode dives into Barry's psyche and examines his mental state given his body count and the walls closing in on him. Consequences are finally finding him and all he can do here is witness the pain he's caused, the life he's taken, as he's incapacitated and at the mercy of Ryan's dad who finds him drugged up in an alley. I love the parallels here to Fuchs and Jim talking about the people they've talked into committing suicide, and meanwhile Barry is mute and motionless and yet somehow lucks out by having his captor, Ryan's dad, kill himself as well. It's a powerful testament to Barry's luck and the weight of grief he's caused within his line of work. Bill Hader says barely a single word in this episode and it was one of his best performances to date. Meanwhile, Sally goes off the deep end and flips out on Natalie, screaming and cussing her out after seeing Natalie luck out with her own show while Sally is stuck in the writer's room for the awful show that replaced hers. And Gene is filming his masterclass to pay his debts to both his agent and Annie, two people he screwed over in the past. The powerful parallels for all our characters here is that they are all taken captive in some way. Barry, Fuchs, and Hank are all taken captive literally, while Sally and Gene both feel captive within their work. However, Sally is digressing while Gene is progressing. The thing that puts this one over episode 8 for me is the humor aspect. The finale didn't really have any jokes in there as it was primarily focused on wrapping up storylines and delivering good action scenes and jaw-dropping revelations. Episode 7 had a little more leeway but was still able to deliver such a strong story. But the moment in this episode that puts it above all else is the scene with Sally literally distancing herself from her agent, being wrapped by darkness as she walks away from the light during her sinister monologue. Sally is dumping the one friend, the one ally she has left, and she finishes digging her hole and has nothing left to do but to confront it. And in the end of the season, she does exactly that by hopping onto a plane headed to Joplin, ditching Barry while Jean sells him out. It's all such powerful storytelling here, and truly, episodes 6 through 8 were the hardest for me to rank. There is so much I wasn't able to address here, so please do be sure to share your favorite moments from this season, as well as your ranking if you have one. I'll be putting out a Barry season ranking on TikTok, so consider following me there by clicking the link in the description below. TikTok is where I'm putting all my companion videos and it also allows us to keep the conversation going. If you enjoyed this video, let me know by clicking that like button and sharing this video with a friend of yours who loves Barry as much as you do. But as always, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I will see you all next time.